good one. Draco Mirror is like, I don't know if you want to go first or second in the Draco Mirror. It like, operates <laughs> on a whole other level of human understanding. This is like, that's what I mean. Like this is I, the thing is, I don't think either of them know unless they were looking in between rounds what the other person's playing. Because at first, like I, I looked at their, I looked at Josh's deck because we knew he was playing Draco, right? right? And I went to go look at James's deck to write it down, and I was like, wait, did he pick up Josh's deck, <laughs> or are they actually just playing the same, same deck? Same sleeves and everything. Yeah, because like when you look at the rest of Top Cut, like. I, We've seen, there's like Orcus and Salamagrate and Thunder everywhere. I promise we're cursed, chat. It, it really <laughs> is. There's some sort of caster curse that is uh, throwing us into these matches. This is going to take a while. Oh, no. I think these will be decided very quickly. So Pot of Desires for James. Uh, that's, um, that's not very smart in the Draco Mirror. You don't want to draw any cards because you're looking to deck your opponent <laughs> game one. <laughs> Good news, says chat. Draco is guaranteed to lose this one. But it's also guaranteed to win, Ugh, which means one of these me. players is still going to be X01. Oh, please take, please take there can be only one. Please. Imagine thinking you've just found the silver bullet against your Orcist opponent. I wonder if it's like stumbled upon Josh yet that like yeah. that's what he's playing against. J Josh is like kind of shaking his head like, oh, okay. Did you see yeah. that face? He just, he's like, oh, it's one of these. <laughs> so really we're just playing uh, bottom tables in Zodiac format all over again? So uh, did he take the there can be only one? I actually he was did looking take away. the there can be only one. Okay. So now each player will only able be able to summon a single worm monster. There's right. the Ignis. <laughs> if Joshua didn't already realize it. Oh wait. Did, did Josh, Josh just pass? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Our reaction. Oh wow. Okay. So now here's the question. Did Josh know that his opponent is playing Draco, decided to do nothing, and now Josh is going to break the board of James? Oh, wow. I think that I mean, might. How do you break the board of Draco? How do you break what was never made? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, pass and mirror is the right play. Oh, all of you. I understand. kind of remember this from when Sam used to play this. Oh. Because I feel like you want to be breaking your opponent's board, and so you don't want to have anything there. So, like, here we go. So he's going to tribute summon Ignis, send the Disciples, and now he gets to just slowly pick it apart. So literally no reaction from James, by the way. He's just like, yes, of course. This is what I signed up to do, and I assumed I'd be playing this at some point. Again, both these players, since they are in the top, they could have known, they could have, like, maybe eyed the other player when they were uh, up at the top tables and been like, oh, if I play against him, I'm playing Draco. So Again, to those of you saying in chat, Imagine choosing this over Infernoids. The Infernoid player wasn't at their seat. Come to your rounds on time. Yeah, if we we would 100% would have uh, showcased the Infernoid match, which we still could next round if they're still in the position that they're in at X01. Oh, um, it was so cool, chat, and you'll never know. We don't even know what it was playing against. Yeah, no. Settle in for it was also Draco. It might have been uh, another Mech Knight deck. <laughs> in fact, <laughs> all of top eight is just Draco at this point. So we see an activation of return. And, he's and a chain of Ignis. in response. And I think we'll see another Ignis activation in response to Here that. comes all the, the big brain plays now. Ooh. And is that Skill, skill drain. drain? Okay. Skill Drain is a game winner against a significant amount of decks, uh, not against True Draco. And so now we see the resolution here. So now Majesty Maiden's going to come out. He's going to sacrifice off the uh, return. It's going to destroy the Ignis. Wow, a lot of hesitation from James to not activate there could be only one to present lethal this turn. I think it was cool that he <laughs> added it to his hand and didn't set it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think playing around evenly or something, uh, what would you expect out of an opponent who passes turn one otherwise? It's fair. So, I mean, we see you get to draw two off this heritage, which is nice. Oh, three, that's right. Because three? I oh, yeah, because counts your it, opponent. It counts your opponent, that's right. That's why heritage <laughs> in the mirror is crazy. It also counts both players. It doesn't it count both players of both types oh, as well? Oh, wait, so you could draw theoretically could, up to six? I think that... No way. I, is that how that works? I'm Googling it. I know at the very least to count your opponent's cards. That is true. But, I mean, being able to regenerate his hand like that is so good. He's going to add another heritage. It caps up to three. Okay. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah, that would be insane. <laughs> wow. Just a, just a, you know, subtle plus five. I've never played the Draco Mirror, so I, I would not know if that would go to six or not. But it didn't. Oh, Thankfully, sheesh. it goes to three. All right, so this is a pre pretty easy out for Skill Drain if you're even concerned about something like that. I don't know if you are. 
So he's going to go diagram. Uh, oh, he's going to, excuse me, tribute heritage for a new copy of Ignis here. And not going to destroy this uh, skill drain. Though There's I don't Demise. Remember. Interesting he opted to keep it up. He's already used it. Demise, very strong in almost every board state. So Demise is just a nice card. I mean, this is really good for Josh, though. He got the Demise and he got the Heritage for three. Uh, we're getting a little bit of information from chat. It's very much whoever breaks a board first and has an advantage due to Heritage Interesting. is the one that wins. That does look like how this game's playing out. And uh, then Josh got to draw three cards. Uh, six, six, actually. Because three from Demise, too. Right, yes. So. Best game of Yu-Gi-Oh! I ever played was a 135-minute Draco Mirror. Please get us that chat. <laughs> but if that's true, I mean, it makes sense that Josh, uh, Joshua would opt to go second because right. that's exactly what he's doing. Right. He, uh, he didn't break James's board necessarily, but, I mean, he got to just generate so much value off of uh, James going second here. So we've used exactly one tribute effect this turn, right? We've per conducted our normal summon. Yes. Theoretically, we could Disciples for another monster. Correct. We have not used Disciples yet. We used Heritage, and we've done a normal summon. And wow. he's just going to discard. There goes his third Drake, uh, his third Ignis, too. <laughs> a shake of the head. Oh, don't be too beat up about it. You've got five set. Yeah, oh. he, looks a, he looks a little bit visibly frustrated from that. I think, it's, I think it's just he's upset that the Demise just drew him possibly like that many monsters. Discarding cards to Demise has got to be the worst possible feeling. Well, especially, when, you, especially when your deck plays like four monsters. Mm -hmm. Maybe six, excuse me. You play like the one Dynamite, three Ignis, three Ignis and two Maiden. Right. Well, there's the third Maiden. Yep. James has identified that he is the beatdown in this matchup. We might see there can be only one. All right, chat. Uh, let's get the Nibiru counter. What are we at right now? <laughs> <laughs> the true tribute summon. So there's a Disciples. It's going to use Disciples, presumably to tribute off. And there's a third Maiden. Oh, my gosh. Okay. How did both players draw every single monster in their deck? Disciples is going to go ahead and pop Diagram here. This could be interesting because if this goes through and if he crashes Ignis, I think James just, like, wins if, the, if everything connects. I don't know if, like, that's his plan. It's, I mean, it doesn't seem terrible. Like, you probably, if you're in the aggressor's seat want to wipe up this game super quickly. Ah, uh, Apocalypse is a card. <laughs> I, I think you kind of have to expect that that's coming. And even if you pop your own Ignis here, you're taking a fair amount of damage, and you're only at 56. Right. It's tough. Apocalypse will have everything. We're going to see a Maiden activation in response here to that Apocalypse. So How he's many go more monsters are in the deck? We've got, what, the Knight? He there it is. He should have a more Dynamite. Ignis, shouldn't he? And James, I think, is still on two additional copies of Ignis? I believe so. So both the uh, Ignises are destroyed. And and so, it's just the one, uh, oh, right? it's just the one, right? Because uh, so he's using Apocalypse to destroy the Ignis, right. and so and have so everything's half. So it's uh, so it's twelve from the Ignis, and then oh, eleven fifty from the Majesty Mains times three, which puts him at nine fifty. Wow, he can't even activate Skill Drain. How unfortunate! How unfortunate! You know that was just one in the match, wouldn't it? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> There's the judgment for the heritage. So he's just going to go. Oh, he's great. He's going to go into the 75s the of life. No, 75s, actually. Do we have the capability to represent this? I don't know. No, we don't. You're just going to have to trust us. I would say just go. I'm just going to take away 500. Five. Yeah. So Joshua's at 475 life points. But, uh, this I, man has already exceeded the capabilities of our most powerful technology. A calculator. <laughs> 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 All right, so there's Pot of Duality, and there's an activation. 
This is going to take a lot here from Joshua to come back from this. Not impossible. There's a there there's can be the skill only drain, one. and there can be only one actually relevant. Wow, there's that's three really good cards. Yeah, well, skill drain's not good at all in this instance, but <laughs> that's two really good cards. <laughs> It depends what else Joshua has set, right? Because, like, if he already... I don't think he would have used it. There can be only one at this point. I yeah. don't feel like he would be still sitting on it. For sure. Yeah, see, exactly. So he's putting Skill Drain back because that's, that's not even, you know, on the table at this point. He just takes Skill Drain? No, no, he put Skill Drain on top of the deck. Oh, <laughs> he said, I'm not yeah. even deciding on this Yeah, card. exactly, because why would you even just have it there? That's tough. I mean, it's like, I, again, I don't know what else is in his hand. We don't have perfect information, so. What could you possibly want to draw off of the, ooh, Card of Demise? I guess we'll find out, wow, won't you, we? You, you just see the look on Joshua's face. Like, he's like, this is rough. He says, okay, we're, okay. we're taking there can be only one. I wonder if Joshua's thinking, like, this card, like, helps me stabilize, but it doesn't help me win. Uh -huh. I wonder if that's what he's thinking in his head. But now we're going to see a uh, Disciples come down that's going to trigger another Maiden. So James just able to thin his deck because of these uh, these monsters here. Mm -hmm. Gets to draw off the disciples. Oh, what is he looking for? I don't know. So he's going to use Apocalypse to tribute here. Oh no, he's going to actually Apocalypse again to use its effect. <laughs> wow. Okay, so shrink things down even more. And we're going to pop the Ignis. Or are we just hoping one big monster is going to out this board? So there's a Heritage. Now we get to draw three from the Heritage. Oh, this sounds so strong. It does, but it like, doesn't matter if he can't stabilize here because his life points are so low. And he should have monsters here because he just recycled them with the Disciples as well. So, I mean, that's not a worry at this point. Right. We All that's in his grave is an Ignis, it looks like. And both these players are uh, X01. Yes, you said? they are. So, like, I mean, they're. They haven't lost yet. They've just gotten a draw each. So, both of them still in contention for top cut uh, pretty easily at this point. So, if you're in James's position, uh, what are you hoping for? What could possibly make this board of several 100 attack monsters relevant? <laughs> I mean, just any threat at this point. Oh, We're going to see another Maiden Trigger, yeah. So James has pretty much gotten all of his threats out of his deck at this point. He's searched a uh, Dynamite and two Ignis. Right. So James has one more Ignis. Joshua, I think, is all the way out of monsters, correct? No, because Joshua... He's got the ones in his hand. Jo yeah, depending on how many he has in his hand. But he also shuffled some back with the... Uh, wow, he's oh, going for the desires, desires now. This is such a late Desires. It's There's risky, so too. so few cards in deck. At least you have the comfort of knowing if you're playing Draco, you don't have to worry about Ash Blossom. Right. So, you know for a fact that's going to resolve. There's Border. Border. Well, he has a lot of attack compared to these extremely crippled mages. It's going to tribute off the Heritage for the Dynamite. Okay, we're getting okay. somewhere. The problem is Border just easily loses to any Draco spell trap. Uh... You know, he, we right. know he has Ignis and Dynamite. I'm so. counting 1,900 for this. Uh, okay. There's no way that I can ad adequately represent the amount of damage this is going to do. Yeah. And, and then, then we'll Border's going to take out another one. And I'll do 15. Or, uh, sorry, let's make this consistent. 1,400. Give or take a few hundred at this point. Yeah. Just because they've been halved twice? That's correct. Ooh. But chat is correct. Um, unfortunately for uh, Joshua, the field spell protects your opponent's Dracos as well. And I believe it's reciprocal, so he's a little bit higher than that. Oh, because they're gaining the 300. Right. Yeah. Wow, this is like the last reciprocal field spell ever printed. Yeah. Remember when that card was 90 bucks? Like three months ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was a while back. Remember when they banned it in the OCG? Yeah. 
I still think this is cool to see like Draco being relevant. There can be only one really, really good when your board is the best Draco and a border. Both of which happen to be different types. We will never be activating any monster effects for the remainder of the game. I'm curious if James is main decking border too. Oh, I, I have to imagine that he is. I don't know. Not all of them do. But it is very good for playing around this specific card. Upstart Goblin. Okay, well, um... Okay, so that gets Josh out of the danger zone a bit here. Now he's at a comfortable 1,400 life points. And we're also going to get a trigger of, uh... Oh, no, no trigger, excuse me. Right, right. He would have triggered except for uh, Inspector Borders on the field. Check out that deck, though. It's about six cards deep at this point. Well, I mean, both of them have desires this game, haven't they? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, both their decks are not exactly, uh... Full. And those Desires Banishes could actually matter if you're trying to grind out the resources. There's a Judgment. A Judgment to the Disciples. To the Disciples. I guess given the low amount of cards in James's hand, that's probably a good idea. Ooh, Simo's cracked the code. I figured out how to do uh, halves of life points. So these life points are just an approximation by now, at best. Oh, absolutely. Joshua is in the area of 700, and James is in the area of 43. He's going to tribute set? <laughs> I've been here. That's a position you never want to Notably, be when I'm there, it's, it's Cypher and Driver. <laughs> And so now we're going to see Josh's turn. He's going to start off with uh, Disciples, it looks like. He's yep, going to shuffle back three, good. get an extra draw. There goes the uh, deck em out win con that James was probably playing for. you got to love cards that give you two draw steps, essentially. Oh, very fun. Yeah. Especially when they prevent you from losing the game. Remember Grand Spellbook Tower? Oh. Grand Spellbook Tower was like Disciples, but more fair. A card that I cannot believe I am describing in those terms. <laughs> You all remember that extremely fair deck, Spellbook. All right, so it looks like... So we know that it's a true Draco, right? I, I don't... What else could it be? It's not like Pot of the Forbidden or anything. Oh, I wish it was. I mean, that requires two tributes. So we attack into it with Inspector Border, and we attack into it with Dynamite Knight, and then we pass turn. So it's an Ignis. So Ignis will survive because of Diagram. Uh-huh. So can... What's, uh, what's Ignis's defense? Is it 21 when it's boosted by Diagram? Oh, I hope not. Well, because if that's the case, that actually protects him here. That means he doesn't have to use Diagram's effect. No. <laughs> it's 1,300. Oh, total. 13. So that means it's 16. So that means Josh could or attack it's over. A, it's 1,000 and goes to 13. Oh, goes to 13. I'm sorry. So which in this case, Joshua can just go attack border over it and then attack with... Uh, oh, correct st uh, chat. It has Monarch stats. Oh, that's true. Dang. This game is making a pretty convincing argument for true Draco Monarch. <laughs> Absolutely not. So, now it looks like... I'm curious if Joshua can't just attack over What's the Ignis. The... Because presumably if he can protect itself once and then attack again... But it's going to be, I mean, you can even see, like, Joshua, like, struggling to figure out, like, how this is supposed to work. Joshua just looking at his cards here. I'm not exactly sure. 
they're probably asking if, uh, oh, that's what's going on. Yeah, so just so you guys know, so they're, they're questioning right now if Diagram will protect this Ignis before the game continues. There we go. There's the judge symbol. Okay, now we know what's going on. Because <laughs> this could matter a lot. This could be super relevant. So they're trying to figure out, uh, for those of you joining us here, all 1,200 of you, which, by the way, that's incredible. Uh, currently, uh, Joshua attacked over a set Ignis with the Inspector Border, and uh, they're questioning if Diagram will protect the Ignis or not. My, I believe it should. I don't see why it wouldn't, but I think the judges are just... Uh, clarifying before we continue. I'm not actually sure what the discrepancy is. Oh, oh you're back. To explain so, the discrepancy. Yeah, so go ahead and explain what's going on. Okay, uh, so basically, uh, James would like to know if it's legal for the two true Draco players to be paired up against each other. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, so the discrepancy is coming from the difference between tribute summoning and tribute setting. So uh, James is saying that tribute setting and tribute summoning are analogous. Josh is saying a tribute set is not a tribute summon and therefore doesn't get the protection of um, Dragonic Diagram. Interesting. Now, from what I have looked up in the last 35 seconds on the wiki, it looks like Josh is right, and tribute setting is functionally different than tribute summoning. But the judge is appealing to the head judge, is appealing to the giga judge, um, and we are trying to divine a ruling for this. <laughs> the giga judge. Yeah. That's really interesting. And that's one of the things with Yu-Gi-Oh! sometimes that's like... I hate this archetype. Yeah, like... <laughs> no, no, not even the archetype. I hate when we have semantics like this. Yes. Like, it's it's a monster that was summoned using a tribute. Like, it shouldn't matter if it was face up or face down. There's a significant amount of rulings that are exactly because of this weird semantic discrepancy. Uh, things like um, return versus summon or return to the graveyard. Uh, things like true king of all calamities including the word possesses. Uh, just corner cases that screw up the entire game for semantic reasons. Yeah, it's crazy. I, and I don't know. Like that's that's one of the things that sometimes can just be like really frustrating because it's something okay. so little. But <laughs> looks like the judge has come back to speak divine wisdom to the pair of these individuals. Okay. And so uh, obviously we don't know what happened because the judge is uh, sitting there. I have to Okay, find out. so they rule. Okay, so it does. It looks like it, it does. Count. It looks like it does protect. Wow. Interesting. Dang, the more you learn. <laughs> So, well, okay, that could just be the ruling for this, yeah. to be fair. Remember, if you're ever going to an event, make sure you, uh, you know, you can ask the judges these things if you're genuinely curious about if you're going to go into a round seven Draco mirror with tribute setting involved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But uh, Josh looking like he's in a very good position at this point. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, granted, his life points are very low. Uh, James does not have a lot of cards in hand. Even with the ruling going against him, you know, I, I think he's feeling pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's complex because it can go either way due to Monarch format. The ruling only applied if a monster is flipped, but is still considering a tribute summon of tribute set. Yeah, see, <laughs> we're trying to extra extrapolate this based on extremely old rulings. Um, and uh, shouts out to our judge for having to navigate these difficult game states. Yeah, for sure. Oof. And there's another Apocalypse. Yeah, so Apocalypse going to... Uh... And remember, they're both undefeated. They have a draw, <laughs> but they're undefeated. This is solidarity between true Draco players. All right, let's see who's going first. Again, it could just be an instance where Josh just goes first. Yep, and he as passed. expected, it's yep. Josh and will pass. Well, you know what? That won him the first time. So <laughs> It looked pretty convincing. And James, pa oh, are we gonna have one? Of is it gonna this be like rocks. a? Is it gonna be like a spiral mirror where oh, both this players is awesome. just pass? <laughs> so, <laughs> look at this game. The only winning move is not to play. And Joshua Even just set a card. a card, not to discard a hand size, could potentially lead to a. No, Joshua would be on six cards. Oh wow! So he actually could have afforded another turn. Maybe that set card is Imperial Order. Maybe it could be, or on ending nightmare, it could just be a big floodgate. All right, so we're trying to go off. 
Okay, so Josh is allowing this. We're going to tribute summon one monster. Okay, that could pop the back row. We're going to try and pop the back row. There goes so the, there can be, only, be one. only one. So there's really only one true Draco sent to the graveyard. This heritage is only going to draw a single card, which is fine. Dang, it's only an upstart? Sheesh. Desires, that's a good one. That is a good one. James just might be trying to just find a way to just, like, win. I, that's probably what you have to do here, right? If you get, if you get three Dracos plus Diagram, does that just win you the game? 28 yes. plus 27. Well, it's got to be the right ones, but yes. 28, 27, 26, right? I think so, but James is just going to attack with this maiden. That's Maiden's, 100 over. Maiden's uh, 22. Uh, maiden is 23, I believe. But I'll look it up to make sure. And James is going to set out his whole hand now. Yep, Maiden is 23. 23, thank you. It's 23, 4, 5. So now plays back to Joshua here. All right, let's see that evenly matched. No evenly matched. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it's not even in the list. And to be fair, Joshua like broke James's board last time. Yeah, he when could he do set it again. up, so he could very much do it again. I'm ready to see it. I'm ready to see another heritage for three. Ugh, diagram is step one, and it's frustrating that James finally blinked and committed to a board that didn't even include a diagram. So Maiden's going to trigger in response here, so that's going to net James a new monster. Yep. That's nice because if James has any of the True Draco traps, he can have a form of interaction on Joshua's turn. We have uh, Farfa joining us in the chat of all 1,200 people watching this. Farfa, why did you have to join now? <laughs> <laughs> so we see a tribute uh, for Ignis uh, during uh, Joshua's turn here. He's going to pop Diagram with the uh, Heritage being used for the tribute. I, for what it's worth, he is correctly identifying his position in this game. Like, he has to be the beat down. He has to be getting in for chip damage. And failing to do so is going to not only lose him the game, but uh, lose him the set if he fails to capitalize in the next 10 minutes. We see Demise from uh, Joshua here. James is going to respond to Ignis, grab a true Draco spell. And Joshua is going to draw three from Demise. James Pretty is going to grab a Heritage. What's the most devastating card Joshua can reveal? that isn't named Storming Mirror Force. <laughs> Joshua opting to drop Imperial Order yeah, with I, the Demise. It loses yeah. you the game faster. It does, I agree. <laughs> I feel like if you're established, that card can win you the game. But in so many sure. instances, that card will just, hands down, just be your Demise. No pun intended. Hilarious. All right, so we're going to see an attack here from Maiden. We'll see if Joshua has a response. If you Apocalypse, you probably do it early, right? I f okay, I mean, that's also a card, too. Firstly, I can't believe he kept in There Can Be Only I'm One. I'm shocked by that as well. But secondly, it's really coming in clutch right here. <laughs> like, maybe uh, we're getting next leveled by Josh as well. Uh, he understood that his opponent was going to be the beatdown, and as a result has boarded into these cards that simplify the game state, even if they're pretty bad in the matchup. And so I think uh, we're going to see an attack from Ignis get in here for 24. Putting Joshua down to 33. Oh, this is this is getting a little spooky. I agree with you though. James has identified that he just needs to like continue being the aggressor at this point. Yeah. Joshua just hasn't seen a monster. So there's the heritage. Almost being played in the deck zone. <laughs> he's gonna draw one. So we're adding back the pendulum zones, but only for true Draco. And he's gonna pass. So Joshua does not have a lot of time here. Does he have another Demise? Okay, so he's Disciples. That's a good start, but does he yeah. have enough? He doesn't have any resources really in the graveyard. He did side and strike at the Monarch, though. That's interesting. I, I understand it, but... Okay, yeah. there's Apocalypse. So Apocalypse shrinks the Ignis, which is something. Unfortunately, it also gives James the ability to heritage the Ignis back if that... Uh, Disciples isn't directly pointed at its face. 
This is so tricky. I feel like every move in this mirror is like can just go horribly wrong at any moment. But Josh was just going to pass. Yeah, and none of the pressure is on Josh, despite being down to 3,300. He can survive this turn easily, and uh, James has to get through at least two more attack steps uh, before he's going to be able to put any sort of dent in Josh's life points. I mean, there's no reason he can't concede with three minutes left and then uh, win a game three. Now, keep in mind, everyone, you do see the time in the top right, or excuse me, top left corner. Uh, we had at least a five-minute judge call, so they're going to have at least some, uh, some more time to work with than that timer suggests. Yeah. James tributes setting once again. <laughs> uh, he's trying to get the judge call turbo going. So we're going to use the heritage to bring out the dynamite. This is a classic play through there can be only one. Sometimes you just have to tribute set cards in order to unlock yourself. And Dynamite Knight is a very large monster, a pretty good target for your remaining card. It's going to pop. There can be only one. Makes sense. I don't love it, but I also don't hate it with a copy of Return on board. Now, we have an attack for 25 coming in here. Joshua only on 3,300. We're going to see the Apocalypse be used here. He's going to pop his own Disciples. So that's going to have the attack. That's also going to trigger Disciples to pop that back row, which it was a trap. I can't see what it was. But now we're going to take 1250 here. It was Waking the Dragon. That would be next level. <laughs> <laughs> Summon a Satellite Falcon. And so now uh, Disciples of James's own here. He's going to shuffle back three and get another draw. Joshua looks extremely annoyed to have to play this one. I agree. I don't blame him. I think he might just be annoyed with his position currently as well. Because <laughs> yeah. it's not looking too hopeful. A combination of frustrated at your draws and frustrated at, you know, life. And play is going to get passed back to Joshua here. Get to Disciples off the top. Does he have enough to be able to do anything with it, though? So he can pop Disciples. Um, I set another one that passes. <laughs> the good news is that this Dynamite Knight is about to become, like, a 750 attack monster. Uh, it would become a 625. I didn't major in math. Dynamite getting in for 1250 currently. Remember, it was halved last turn by the Apocalypse. I think Josh was deciding real quick. He says, okay, He's gonna yeah, take I'll take it. it. Yeah. All right, good. We're back to round numbers. Oh, thanks. For now. Hey, if you all could continue to do that, I'd really appreciate it. <laughs> it's interesting that James has just kept that monster set this whole time. I don't know if that's just, like, the pro, pr true Draco mirror move, or... I'm telling you, it's Cyframe Gukam. <laughs> Cyframe driver. driver? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Apocalypse is going to pop the Disciples. So that's going to put Dynamite Knight down to 625. <laughs> uh, and then Disciples gets to pop a card here. I don't know what you're picking, but you got to pick it fast. I like going for the return. He has no monsters. So we got to chain it, right? Do we have an Ignis in the graveyard? Apparently not. And so duality now. For those of you saying it's four minutes left, they have an extension. Uh, they had a very interesting judge call. <laughs> Joshua just immediately putting Inspector Border back. No, we'll be taking the Ignis today. Going for the Ignis. This is nice because he can tribute the Apocalypse now, summon the Ignis, pop the uh, Dynamite. I don't even know if or he can no. tribute the Apocalypse. It's been really, really good. Oh, Ooh. no, he put the Ignis back. Wow. Interesting. He's already got what he needs. Electing to go for a heritage. And Here's ooh. the judgment. And yeah. there's the judgment on Josh's side. Well, that explains what uh, what all the set cards were. So that's going to resolve. And so Joshua's going to get to draw two cards. But Joshua's only on 400 life now. So, okay, that, so one of them has to be a monster. That Dynamite Knight is on a very low attack. It can still it can still finish Joshua off at this point. This is tough. I do not envy either of these players. This is far beyond the scope of my understanding. <laughs> so he's going to tribute Apocalypse for Maiden. Going to pop the set. 
What is it? Oh, we can't oh, see. It's off camera. We can't see. I choose to believe it was Driver. Um, so Maiden's going to attack. That Dynamite right. is down to 625. Okay, someone do math. So 23 minus 625 is uh, 1675. <laughs> oh, jeez. Good luck. Um, have you, fun with those life points. <laughs> you didn't need luck at all. You had it. So James on 2325 life. Oh, we might actually get a 2 0. Josh Maybe. has been playing extremely fast and loose with his life total, but it's really paid off so far. Okay, so we see a Disciples. This is going to trigger Maiden as well. Mm -hmm. And Maiden is basically the best thing Joshua can be triggering now. Um, being I agree. Being cut off from monsters the entire game. Now he can move into the driver's seat. Not to mention if Josh has an Apocalypse or a Return set. Then he has a form of Disruption as well. I think James is actually rather low on cards at this point. Yeah. Oh, he's no, got maybe. Like no, he's four got. in hand. Uh, that's not low. Never mind. I thought he had less than that. <laughs> There's the diagram, right, so diagram, finally. This is the first diagram we've seen out of James. That was what caused our little ruling issue earlier. Ugh. Josh that is correctly pointing out that without diagram, Maiden reduces James to exactly 25 life points. <laughs> he's going to judgment the diagram. This is going to put. Joshua down to 200. Sparks is lethal. <laughs> Could you imagine? I would prefer not to. I, I got to admit, I like seeing Judgment at 3 solely for this, though. Yeah, I will honestly, say. Honestly, Judgment at 3, I remember when it came off, everyone said, oh, this is going to be miserable. And it turns out the decks that can play it are completely fine for the most part. There are times when it looks really good because you get to pay 200, and there are times where it looks really bad because you have to pay 4,000. Yeah, James paid 4,000, and his got negated, so. <laughs> <laughs> How does that feel? To those of you in chat, yes, Final Cut is today. After our ninth round of Swiss, we will be cutting to top 16. Yes, which we are going extremely quick that we are on round seven. To, to fair, this is the first round that we've had on stream that's gone into time. Yeah. Um, well, it hasn't yet. That's true, actually, because they do have like a five-minute time extension, so they're not even going to be in time yet. We saw Desires coming out of James. Did James already Desires this game? Not in the same turn. Yeah, he did. There's one in the graveyard already. How many cards are in his deck? Uh, so he's banished 20. <laughs> There's got to be like 10 remaining. Well, as long as you have two Disciples, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Apparently. He's going to Tribute for a Maiden of his own. I'm surprised he didn't banish all of his monsters. Those cards have got to do something. I know that 80% of the deck is dead in the mirror, but... One of these floodgates has to have some form of utility. So he can use that Disciples to pop one of the back row. Do you pop the Heritage or you just go for one of the random back row at this point? I mean, what is your opponent going to do? Draw you out of the game? I mean, no, probably. Looks at the card. Uh, I will activate Apocalypse. Can you use Apocalypse? Okay. Looks like he's trying to pop his Heritage here. And I don't hate this. This actually would clear James's field, yes? Yeah. So we're going to see Maiden in response. And then there can be only one in response. Interesting. That's interesting. The big brain chain links. We're on chain link 12. We're on chain link 4 right now, I think. Because we had the Disciples Grave Effect chain 1, Apocalypse chain 2, Maiden chain 3, and uh, there can be only one chain 4. And then after that, you go to the sublinks that only Draco players know about. <laughs> Look at that, he's shuffling his six-card deck. Is there another Disciples? I know we have at least one. His four deck cards. is it's like four, four cards. cards. This is where you uh, animate Card of Sanctity. Yeah. And James automatically loses the game. So, chat, do keep in mind this. Uh, it says time in the top left corner, but these players have about a five-minute time extension for a judge ruling. I will say, I've been enjoying seeing, like, the big brain level Draco plays here that we've You know, seen. I mean, uh, Draco gets uh, a lot of chaff, rightfully so in some regards. Uh, but it really is an interesting deck with a lot of varied lines. And um, I think that these mirrors really show uh, how in a different format, where the power level of Draco was low and didn't involve Masterpiece, we might have been able to see these play out, you know, not in mirrors. 
And so we might see a Heritage pop the uh, uh, Heritage, funny enough. This is Heritage on Heritage. It looks like Joshua is just trying to, is he's trying to count it's like, okay, the number so of different spells that are remaining. Because remember, James has banished half his deck to Desires at this point. Yeah. There's so little remaining. It looks like Joshua is just like looking in the grave to see, like, does this matter? What's interesting, too, is that if this gets popped, then he can go ahead and use that effect to pop the, uh, that there can be only one, but actually allowing it to stay. And we're going to see a set three pass. This is like James's last stand here with only a four-card deck at his disposal. It's actually called Dead Man's Burst. Dead Man's Burst. So here comes Dynamite, tributing the True King's return to Pop Mate. Is that going to do it? Uh, tell me that's how this game ends. All this back and forth just that, for a normal if our life, Dynamite if our, to win If our game. life points are correct, that's game. I'm sure he has an apocalypse. Come on. Again, he's banished half his deck. <laughs> says, oh, okay. Yes, I'm at 23-25. Okay, there's a crackdown. Wow. Yeah. And so we're going to trigger Dynamite. So he's going to grab an Apocalypse. Crackdown's going to go to James' side. And there's a Demise. demise. What oh, a sweet wow. last card in hand. Pretty good. You know, you got to give it to Josh. I mean, Josh has been very disciplined this whole match. Yeah, he's been playing super reserved. I mean, again, like, I, I know that Chad has their misgivings about True Draco, but watching really good control players play decks is kind of fascinating. Yeah, and can we just say there are 1,255 people watching this right now? Wow. Thank you, you guys so much. out for this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you have lives? It is only 5 p.m. So now we get the diagram. Off that demise, Joshua just got so much. He got a Disciples. Super fast. Yeah, he had a diagram. He knows time is getting close now. Yeah. And, and he's, he's at 200 down. life. Yeah. And both these players already have a draw. So <laughs> neither one of these players wants to get a second draw. If it goes to time, James is automatically going to get a win, and then uh, that's a draw right there. So Joshua's going to grab a Maiden. Disciples is going to pop the crackdown. It's going to return control of the Dynamite to Joshua's side. Here comes the Heritage. He's going to draw... Uh, playing at light speed now. I love it. Is it just one? Two. Oh, two. You're right. Because yeah. he, uh, yeah. Says, go ahead. I have reestablished my board as I have done every single turn of this game. That's tough. He's like, what do you have in your graveyard? Uh, obviously just asking a couple extra questions to see if we can get in before time. All right. So kicking these off with Disciples. Yep. It was James saw as that to work with. He has a three card deck. So with two Disciples, he's actually not in any danger of decking. Unless he fails to shuffle back a Disciples here. There's no way you don't pick Disciples, right? Yeah, okay. I was going to say, I don't think so. It's just about the only way you lose this game uh, without ever having to interact with the board. With his uh, now, what is it, five-card deck? <laughs> he says, yeah, whatever. Is that time? I saw Joshua holding his hand and doing a countdown. If so, this is going to be a tie. I think. I think that's it. I think the players are just like showing their cards. Wow. Oh no. Oh no! It's. I'm pretty sure that was time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And it's going to be a tie. Oh wow! <laughs> Crazy. So because it's a tie, it's a it's a tie. Or excuse me, it's the reason it's a tie is because James is currently at higher life. So James.